What's happening people? Dan Lawless here back with another edition of the West Ham Week where I take three of the top stories from West Ham for throughout the week, break down to two minute sections. Now, it's a bit of a manager theme today as that's the most of the stories that have been out this week. So we'll get into that. Don't forget to subscribe, leave your comments below, press the bell, all of that stuff. And without further ado, you happy? There you go, ado. Let's get into it. Start the timer now. So David Moyes apparently is the bookies' favourite to be the next West Ham manager uh, with 3-1 to one odds on him becoming the next West Ham manager, which is absolutely frightening if that's the case. Now, I don't know how much you can read into bookies' odds and things like that, but they're in the business of making money, right? If they've got some sort of indication, they spend a lot of time looking at this. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but they've obviously get this from somewhere. Um... I mean, I'm no betting man, but three to one odds, that's pretty strong. Uh, but that would be a disaster if we went for David Moyes. And I've heard little rumours and things like that, that 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 is someone they have looked at. But there is no point replacing Slavin Bilic with David Moyes. That'd be a complete sidewards, backwards step, whatever. I mean, yeah, the guy had done a good job at Everton for a while. But it's like I always say, some managers are just a good fit there. He went to Man United. You know, he didn't meet up to their expectations. Then he went to Sunderland, took him down. Why are we going for a manager that's been relegated? Uh, you know, and he had an awful season at Sunderland. That would be terrible. What is it? Because he's cheap. I mean, I'm not going to like jump to conclusion and start being all like, ah, oh, the board, the board. It's not confirmed. These are just the odds that they've put out there. But if it happens... <sighs> I don't even know, like, what I'll do. it would be awful going to West Ham and knowing that David Moyes is the manager. I mean, you can't see a bright future there. Um, so, I don't know. I'd like to know what you guys think about David Moyes, but, you know, we, we need to be looking better than that. You know, if we're going to be replacing Slav, we need to be looking. That's, that's, that's definitely going backwards. There are other managers, you know, then I would prefer Sean Dyche or a manager like that, even though I don't really want Sean Dyche, but I'd prefer him over Smoyes. There's a lot of managers I prefer over David Moyes, managing the championship. I'm not happy about that at all. Um, another story that's come out from an uh, ex-employee, good mate, ex-employees are usually reliable on these sorts of things, that the club, the higher-ups at the club, see... Uh, agree that Bilic is on borrowed time which makes you wonder if he's on borrowed time then just don't borrow it just sack him if you if you're at that point where you think oh you know it could be any time now he's on borrowed time then you're not investing in the future of the you don't say future with this manager and in that case you know you might as well sack him at the end of the day you know, I mean, I, I want us to make sure that we replace him with the best manager possible. So I'm not super in a rush to sack him. But as a club, if that's how you feel, what's the point in keeping a manager in the job if that's the way you feel? It, you know, just just sack him. It's not fair to him. It's not fair to the players or or the fans. Just if that's how I feel, just, you know, put the money up. And he can't be, the, the compo can't be that much and just part ways with him get if worst case scenario get Terry Wesley and he's doing a, uh, a pretty good job with the under 23s whether that would translate no he, he might bring a few up but we'll have to see how Liverpool goes but it's tough as I suppose as a manager knowing any game can be your be your last game and I had this little thing about Big Sam on Twitter a lot of people saying oh well he knew he was going at the end of the season that's why uh, he didn't do well was Billich's exclusive well he knows he's going he knows that he's not going to be here beyond the end of the season let's get it that way but also you know he's always got a couple jobs before he gets a couple games before his job's under basically going to be sacked so he's in a worse situation not that I'm saying that, you know, Slav is the man to say it's forward, but you can't sit there and make excuses for one manager and then slate another manager. You know, you've got to be even-handed on that. So, phew, I don't know. Uh, lastly, you know, another thing from good old ex-employee. He's come out and said that informal talks have been held with Ronald Koeman. Um, which, again, it's like... It, it's kind of like... Uh, you know, you, you, you're with your wife, things aren't going well, you're thinking about leaving her, and then you start up and you, before you leave her, you start looking for some, another wife or another, another woman before you leave her, so you've got something to jump straight into. It's, it's a bit out of order at the end of the day, like, 
if if they want Kuman, like I said, I'm not crazy about that day. He might come in and do a really good job, but he just seemed to run out of ideas at Everton, and that's worrying. You know, it's beyond just having too many new players. It's running out of ideas, which, um, you know, a lot of the Everton fans criticised him. You know, I've checked out, like, Toffee TV um, and what them guys, those guys have to say. So I've, I've watched a lot of stuff, what they've said, and, uh, yeah, it weren't, weren't a good analysis of Kuman. And, yeah, he might come in and do a good job for a while, or he might have one good season, but can he, can he, is he someone that can really build this club up? really organise us, um, get us playing some good football and, you know, attract some good players at the end of the day. And, I, you know, I have my doubts about that. You know, like I said, I want us to get the best calibre of manager we can possibly get um, to take us up the table and, and, and attract. Again, like I said, it's about attracting good players as well because it's tough. Like, you know, people talk about Big Sam, but a lot of problem he had is a lot of players didn't want to play for him because of his style of football. So we had trouble attracting players. Like it's the same with Bilic now, you know. And if you're not, if you if you're a team that's struggling or you or a manager that hasn't got that respect or that name value, it's hard to attract good players. And the manager does have a hand in that as well as the club. So we'll see. I just don't think. I think if if they are going to talk to other managers, just let him go. It's, it's a bit it's a bit crap to what thing to do really. Um, yeah. So that's it for this week. Sorry if it was too much focus on manager stuff, but like I said, I just go with what the main stories, what people are talking about out are out there. Um, you know, like I said, we've got a few injuries and stuff like that to deal with and all sorts. But we'll see how it goes at Liverpool. Um, don't forget to subscribe, all of that stuff. Check us out on Volley, the Volley app, which is uh, this new app about, it's like Instagram and Twitter type of thing, pictures. We do put post-exclusive stuff on there, so... Um, yeah, it's a free app. Check it out and, you know, see what you think. But also Twitter and Facebook, all of that business. Fan cams are going to be coming out post-match pint. Uh, the preview's already up, so check out Scott's preview. And uh, one thing left to say, come on, you irons.